Hello everyone, welcome to Miss Wet and Science Revision. In this video we're going to look at how to predict the products of electrolysis when our electrolyte is either molten or in aqueous solution. So a quick recap of the electrolysis setup. We've got our DC power supply, which we've connected to our two electrodes, the anode and the cathode. The anode is positive and the cathode is negative. We remember that using the phrase PANIC, which stands for positive anode, negative is cathode. If you don't remember that off by heart, write it down because you're going to need it later. Then in our beaker, which we have submerged our electrodes in, is the electrolyte. And that's just the substance that you're going to do electrolysis on, the substance you're going to electrolyse in order to split it up. So your electrolyte can be one of two different types of liquid. It can either be a molten liquid, which means you've just taken your solid ionic compound and you've melted it. Or you could dissolve your solid ionic compound in water, in which case you produce an aqueous solution. If your electrolyte is molten, it will only contain the ions in that compound, nothing else. Whereas if your electrolyte is an aqueous solution, because you've dissolved it in water, it will also contain the ions from the water, because the water will split up into two ions of its own. Now if your electrolyte is an aqueous solution, that's going to change the products that you would form compared to if your electrolyte was molten. So let's think about predicting the products if our electrolyte is molten. So we're going to think first about sodium chloride that's molten. And all that means is we've taken some solid sodium chloride and we've melted it. We would pour that into our beaker. So this is what our electrolysis setup will look like. And in that beaker will only be sodium chloride, nothing else. Now there are only two ions in sodium chloride. There is a positive sodium ion. And there is a negative ion, which will be our chloride ion. So when you pass electricity through this mixture, this electrolyte, the positive sodium ions, because they will be attracted to the negative electrode, the cathode, the sodium will move to the negative cathode. When it gets there, it turns back from an ion into an atom, so therefore we have sodium being produced. On the other hand, our negative chloride ions are going to be attracted to the positive anode, so the chloride ions will move to the positive anode. When they get there, they will turn back from ions into atoms, They'll form chlorine atoms, so we will produce chlorine. So for the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride, we will produce two products. First is sodium, and the second is chlorine. So when you're predicting products for a molten electrolyte, all you need to do is decide what is that electrolyte made up of, what are the two things that it is made of, and that is what it will split up into. Now we have some practice questions for predicting the product of electrolyzing a molten electrolyte. The first one we're going to think about what is made when we electrolyze molten lead bromide. Secondly, molten aluminium oxide. Then the next two are a bit more specific. We want to know what is produced at the cathode specifically for molten silver chloride. And then what will be produced at the anode for molten potassium oxide. Now you're going to need to use PANIC because it's asking you specifically for the cathode, what's made at the cathode. You need to remember that the cathode is negative. And just to give you a helping hand here, I'm going to give you the ions that are in silver chloride, just to give you a help. And then we need to know that the anode is positive. So here are the ions in potassium iodide to help you figure this out. Pause the video and see if you can figure out what will be produced. Okay, in the first case, for molten lead bromide, we will produce lead and bromine, because those are the two things that make up lead bromide. Then we will produce aluminium and oxygen for aluminium oxide. Now, the cathode is negative, so it will be the positive silver ions that will be attracted to it. So it will be silver that is produced, not chlorine, because that is negative. That wouldn't be attracted to the negative electrode. And for number four, the anode's positive, so it will be the negative iodide ions that are attracted to the anode. Therefore, we're going to produce iodine. Okay, so this is method number two, aqueous solutions. So how do we know what's going to be produced if we have an aqueous solution? 
An aqueous solution is just when you dissolve your solid ionic compound in water. So if I dissolved sodium chloride in water, I would produce aqueous sodium chloride. You'll know something is aqueous because you'll see this state symbol here, AQ. So that tells you that it's a solution. Aqueous solutions contain not only the ions that you've dissolved from the compound that you've dissolved, for example, sodium and chlorine, they're also going to contain the ions from the water that you've dissolved it in. And they, that water splits up into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So if we were to look at our electrolysis setup this time, for aqueous sodium chloride, a sodium chloride would split up into sodium and chlorine, but the water would also split up into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So we've now got four ions. The problem is, out of those two positive ions, only one can form a product. Out of the two negative ions, again, only one can form a product. So how do we know which of the ions in that electrolyte are going to form a product? How do we know whether it will be sodium or hydrogen, chloride or hydroxide? To work this out, we're going to need two rules and we'll do them one at a time. So for what is produced at the cathode, we have this rule. And bearing in mind that the cathode is negative, so it will be where the positive ions go to, we're only bothered about the positive ions. Either hydrogen or the metal will be produ produced, whichever is less reactive. So we have a hydrogen ion and a metal ion, such as sodium. Whichever is less reactive, that is the one that will produce a product. So if we had our aqueous sodium chloride, it would split up into these different ions. But we're only interested in the positive ions because we've got the negative electrode here. So in aqueous sodium chloride, we have two, two, uh, two positive ions and they are sodium and hydrogen. So we need to decide out of those two, which one will be produced. We want to know which is less reactive. So to figure that out, we need our reactivity series. So we've got our list of elements. The elements at the top are more reactive. The elements at the bottom are less reactive. They're getting less reactive as we go down the list. So we need to use that list and decide out of hydrogen and sodium, which one is less reactive. Well, if we look at our list, hydrogen is lower down the list than sodium, which means that hydrogen is less reactive. And that tells us that in this case, hydrogen is going to be produced. Here are some practice questions for what will be produced at the cathode specifically. So remember the rule is that either hydrogen or the metal will be produced, whichever is less reactive. We're only thinking about those positive ions. Here's your reactivity series to use. Number one, identify the product at the cathode when a solution of magnesium chloride is electrolyzed. And the ions in magnesium chloride, the positive ones which we're thinking about, would be magnesium and hydrogen. Then have a think about sodium bromide. Now the positive ions in sodium bromide would be sodium and hydrogen. And finally, copper sulfide. And the positive ions in that would be copper and hydrogen. Use your reactivity series, pause and have a go. In the first example, out of magnesium and hydrogen, Hydrogen is less reactive, and that means hydrogen will be produced. In the second example, we've got hydrogen and sodium. Hydrogen again is less reactive, so hydrogen will be produced again. And out of copper and hydrogen, in this case, copper is actually less reactive. It's lower down in the list than hydrogen, so that means copper will be produced. Okay, now let's think about what will be produced at the anode. So bearing in mind the anode is the positive electrode, we are only thinking about the negative ions because that's where they will go to. At the anode, oxygen is produced unless there's a group 7 element present. So that means if you out of your negative ions, if you have got a group 7 present, that will be produced. If you haven't, then oxygen will be produced. So our aqueous sodium chloride has these ions, so that means it contains two negative ions, which we're thinking about now, chloride and hydroxide. So is there a group 7 element present in those two ions? Well, yes, there is, because we can see that chlorine is in group 7. Therefore, because we've got a group 7 element present, the group 7 element will be produced. So chlorine will be produced. 
If there wasn't a group 7 present, we would produce oxygen. This is just a different example. We've got calcium oxide this time. These are the ions it will split up into. And the two negative ions are oxide and hydroxide. Is there a group 7 element present in these ions? No, neither of those are fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. Therefore, because we don't have a group 7 element present, we're going to produce oxygen. Here are some practice questions for what is formed at the anode. So we're only worrying about the negative ions now. Remember the rule is that oxygen will be produced always unless there's a group 7 element present, in which case that one will be produced. OK, our first example, magnesium chloride. The negative ions in there will be chloride and hydroxide. Then we will try sodium bromide. The negative ions in there will be bromide and hydroxide. Remember the hydroxide is coming from the water. And finally, copper sulphide. So the negative ions in there will be sulphide and hydroxide. Pause the video and see if you can work these out. So in the first example, out of chloride and hydroxide, chlorine is in group 7, so we have a group 7 element present, so chlorine will be produced. For sodium bromide, bromine is in group 7, the bromide ions, therefore bromine will be produced. And finally, out of sulphide and hydroxide, neither of those are in group 7, there's no group 7 element present, so we're going to produce oxygen instead. Notice that it's Cl2, Br2O2. Make sure you're writing the elemental form. OK, now some practice questions that cover both electrodes. So remember, these are the rules. Either hydrogen or the metal will be produced, whichever is less reactive, and oxygen is produced unless there's a group 7 element present. So for each electrode, the anode and the cathode, what will be produced for electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride? Those are the ions there. Then try copper sulfate. Those are the ions in copper sulfate. And then we're going to try potassium fluoride. Those are the ions in potassium fluoride. Pause the video and see if you can work these out. OK, in the first case, we've got hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. Therefore, hydrogen will be produced. And at the anode, do we have any group 7s? No, there's no group 7 present, therefore oxygen will be produced. For the second one, copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so copper will be produced. And then again, there's no group 7 element present, so oxygen will be produced. And finally, hydrogen is less reactive than potassium, so hydrogen is produced. And in this case, fluorine is in group 7, so we do have a group 7 element present, so fluorine is produced. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.